this little welder, I'm going to tear it down now because it's busted. It arrived this way. It didn't arrive this way. That's not fair. Um, when I adjusted out the magnetic shunt out the full distance um, and went to adjust it back in again, something popped. So the uh, this is just screwing out now. There's a circuit or something jumped off the end of it. So I'm going to uh, strip it down in order to be able to uh, fix it. And uh, in doing so, I'll give you a look at the inside of this little welder because this little welder is a miniature of almost every little, uh, almost every AC welder, regardless of the size. And the inside of uh, um, air cooled uh, welder. And um, inside you'll get to see what's in these welders like. You know, they're nice little compact welders, right? It's just a pity that happened, and it's just one of those things. Probably a power assembly, something wasn't put on right, and it jumped off. You know, there's no QC these days. And uh, anyway, I'm going to pull it apart, and we'll get a... This is, this is going to be a teardown of a brand new welder. Now, here we have the transformer, as you can see yourself, the primary coil over here, the secondary coil over here, and here we have the magnetic shunt. This is just a little piece, leaves of metal that uh, are screwed in and out between these two, uh, these two coils here and uh, they interfere with the um, the magnetic uh, field so that that's how you adjust your amperage so this just gets screwed in and out. Now what's actually happened to this car is this is busted so I'm going to have to find out what's wrong with it so I'm going to have to take this transformer off now there's also on this one a fan on the back here right to uh, to cool it down right and that kind of extends maybe the the um, the, uh, the working time before it overheats so uh, Tiny little machine, you know, but an almost an exact copy of uh, all those little uh, buzz boxes, as they call them, you know, regardless of the amperage. And um, just a little little machine, you know what I mean? I've got to fix it because I've got to, I've got to have a bit of crack with it, you know, and uh, see what it'll do. You know, it goes from 40 to uh, uh, 100 amps, and uh, they're all over the web, these things, you know. It's a fine transformer in there now for such a small machine. It takes up nearly the whole uh, uh, cabinet, doesn't it? And um, it should be just interesting, like uh, what I can do. So, I'm going to pull it apart anyway and see if I can repair it first. Now, I'm going to show you the internal workings of an AC welding transformer um, with variable amp uh, amperage adjustment uh, so that you'll never have to think about it again. Now this is a welding transformer, a variable, a variable amperage uh, welding transformer and you have here your two windings, your primary and your secondary and in the middle you have what's called the magnetic shunt, this here and it's adjusted in and out by screwing in and out and it uh, interferes with the, um, the uh, uh, magnetic field. Now. Just to show you how this works, I'm going to take the top off this because I can split this one in two. Now, this is how the magnetic shunt works. Okay? It's just screwed in and out. And when it's fully out, as you can see it's going out now, and when it's fully out, you have the highest amperage because it's interfered less with the uh, metal core. It'll come right out. You can see yourself get the adjustment right out on it. Now there you are, you see. That's the highest amperage, right? Because it's not interfering at all with the the core of the um, transformer. When you screw it all the way back in, which I'm not going to bother doing all the way now, but that will give you the lowest amperage. And that's how these um, uh, magnetic shunt works. Uh, ma magnetic shunts work. They just interfere with the magnetic field between the two windings. 
Now I have the uh, magnetic shunt repaired on this uh, transformer and uh, I'm putting the transformer back into its cabinet. next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it on and just check the, um, the open voltage. Right, we've 42, 43 volts there. Let's take our help. Forty four, forty. You can see that there. Forty five. Slowly. This is only the volts now, it's not the average. Forty six volts, okay? Now I'll just put the cover back on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to Born a rod down with it, a welding rod down with it, and uh, just to see what sort of amperage is coming out. I'm going to measure it with a um, a, uh, a clamp meter. It'll give me some kind of idea what's coming out. Well, I've done it before, and uh, I, I would know from other welders uh, what's coming out. It jumps all over the place, but if it hits any, if it hits three figures at all, I'd be happy. I don't think it will. It'll be somewhere up in the nineties. I'd say it'll it'll hit. It'll hit. But um. I've also I've changed the air clamp on it. There's no reason to, other than I had one there off another old welder. So I've changed the air clamp off on it. And I want to say that on this model, which is silver line, there really is, they really give you a good um, uh, electrode holder. You know, electrode holders can be, and these cheap welders can be quite bad. That's a really good one. Like It really gets a good grip of it. You know, it takes a bit of force and it's a good electrode holder. And the air clamp had nothing wrong with it. So I just took it off because I had one there and it's just a little bit better. And uh, that's basically it, you know. I want to see what the uh, what these little machines can do, you know. I'm going to place a clamp meter around the earth here. And I'll uh, set the, um, the camera on it and... Uh, We'll see if it, if it hits three figures at all, which I doubt, right? But, you know, that's usually, like, uh, I, I tried it on an 80 amp one, and it, it would be down to 50 or 60 at times. It's not steady on, on uh, welding current for some reason, but it, uh, it, would, it would hit the 80 every now and again, 79, 79, 79, so I knew that, you know, that it was about right. So if it hits three figures at all, uh, you'll know that uh, we're, uh, we're getting uh, the 100 amps. But I had me doubts. I had it set. Uh, on DC instead of AC. So we'll go again and we'll run another bead alongside that one and uh, we'll burn another rod down and see where we get. Maybe this time I'll get it right. Okay. Get that extractor on for us.
Okay. Let's have a look at the second wheel. Should be no difference. Should be nice and consistent. Tell me it won't be. Ah, there we go, right. Get a look at it. Now, I'm going to get a look at that video now and see what sort of amperage we were getting. Now I know it's hard to make a sense of them readings but uh, from my experience using that clamp meter on other welders and welders that I would know what was coming out of them, um, I'm happy enough that that's reading up in the 90s as I expected it would. So uh, I'd be happy enough that the amperage coming out of it is somewhere in the 90s. Um, probably not high in the 90s but I don't know, somewhere in the 90s. And um, anyway, I'll be doing a, a full series of videos on this little welder just to see what you can get out of it, see what it's capable of, and see uh, because it is they are a little DIY welder, they're meant for nothing else. But what can you do with them? I'm going to find out.